Hello everyone, my name is Nikki, and if you're a regular viewer of the TVI channel, you will know me as Mrs. TVI. I don't have a car, but I do have a GoPro and an interest in history, architecture, but more specifically, cemeteries. It's time to see where I am and what I'm getting up to in my corner of the TVI channel today. Hi everybody, Mrs. TVI here. I'm gonna do a cemetery wandering for you today. Um, and just to sort of show you exactly where we are. So here we have a river. This is the River Loxley. And here we have the back of Hannah. And here we have a Greyhound Stadium and a casino. Today we are in Sheffield and we are going to explore a relatively unknown closed cemetery called Ward's End. Okay, so to get to Ward's End, we have to walk down this street, Livesy Street or Livesy Street, and this is at the back of Owlerton Greyhound Stadium. And this cemetery has got a bit of a storied history. It was opened in the mid 1800s and closed to new burials in 1968. It's been a place where there was a riot. Um, the sexton and the vicar of the parish of St Philip's who fed into the cemetery were prosecuted at York Assizes for reusing burials or burial sites. There's, there's a lot of history and rather than me try and explain it all in the video I'm going to put some links in below. But on the hillside above in the middle of the shop there, all those trees, that is where we are headed. And just on the way to the cemetery, with the sun getting in the shot, we've got the Sheffield College campus. So Livesy Street is quite a busy place. Greyhound racing, gambling, and you could learn something while you're here too. So what I forgot to mention about Arlerton and this mural actually, pictures it quite well. They also have speedway here and other sports as well and it's also a dine-in and a place where you can sort of go and socialise as well. So it's not just about the greyhound racing, there's lots of other stuff too. So it's currently about eight o'clock in the morning. Um, Andy's dropped us here and then gone off to do a little filming of his own but he'll be back. I have to say, for a busy city, this part of it is so, so quiet. You can literally hear a pin drop. It's that quiet. And, uh, you know, it's kind of really the perfect kind of resting place for the sort of 30,000 people that are interred here. So, almost there. Catch you in a moment. So, we've arrived. Cemetery's at the back of me there. This is the River Don, and as you can see, this is where we're heading. There's a nice little area there to sit by the river. We're going to go and have a look at that sign in a moment as well. A little car park here. But yeah, let's go and investigate this place. Couple of old caravans down there. Right, so here we are. Ward's End Cemetery Heritage Park with nearly 30,000 burials, including soldiers from the nearby Hillsborough Barracks and victims of the Great Sheffield Flood of 1864. Ward's End is an important part of Sheffield's social history, a haven for wildlife and a place for art and performance. And it's also a place of remembrance with burials from those who served and died in the two great, well, great wars. 
Now, there is a war memorial here. There is also some, I think, footings are a cemetery chapel. Um, but let's uh, let's have a walk around. Might not say an awful lot when we're in the cemetery. I might have to just pop on some voiceover. But you'll see just how overgrown this is. And it's only thanks to the work of uh, the Friends of Ward's End Cemetery that some of this uh, vegetation has actually been cut back and allowed the cemetery to be accessible to all. Um, just quickly before we, we go in, just notice this natty little thing. Got the face carved out there of the rock. How far is that? Let's head off up the footpath. So as I'm sure you can hear the sounds of nature and the sun peeking through. And just in the middle, you can see the footings as to where there used to be a cemetery chapel. We do have uh, a war memorial and obelisk in here as well, but when I sweep the camera around, look at this. Hundreds of graves in all different guises headstones, obelisks, tombs. There's a George Cross burial in here, a recipient of the George Cross. Although I don't know where to find him. And there is also a Sheffield United fan. A famous one buried in here too, which we will find him. I know where to find his grave. Just look at this. You can certainly tell why and how this cemetery has become a wildlife haven. It's just, it's overgrown, but it has a the beauty about it, even as overgrown as it is. So Hannah tells me, as I've been looking around, that she's seen some squirrels as well, which is unsurprising. But this is quite a steep hill, going to the top of the first section of this cemetery. It does actually go over a railway line, and that's where we're headed next. Oh, excuse me, sounding out of breath. It's, it's quite steep, that. Whew. So I'm on a bridge here. Whew. So it's looking over a railway, which is down there. You can just see the tracks. And the railway splits the cemetery in two. So we just walk through the bottom section and now we're going to have a look at the not quite as dense top section so I'm going to hand the camera to Hannah and she's going to film and let's see what she comes up with we'll turn her into a mini Mrs TVI or a Miss TVI so up here we've got quite a few headstones and there's lots of leaning ones and Hannah says she doesn't like that which I understand and then we've got like trees that have grown out of or near very near to graves this one here as you can see it looks very sooted so it looks fire damage it looks as though this top part of the cemetery has suffered with some fires I don't know when that was but it looks fairly recent so this is probably one of the most famous graves in Ward's End and it's for Tom Wharton. So if Hannah, if you can come and have a look at the stone. There we go. So Tom, who passed away in 1933, was described in 1926 as the happiest man in Sheffield. And he was a loyal and dedicated follower of Sheffield Wednesday Football Club during their early years. Now, the thing about Ward's End Cemetery and the thing about Sheffield Wednesday Football Club is that if those trees weren't there you would see Sheffield Wednesday's ground from here because it's literally just over there. 
So Tom's grave that we've just seen there, um, the headstone was recently replaced on it. And I do think, I'm, I'm pretty sure if my mind serves me correctly, that the Friends of Ward's End Cemetery had quite something to do with that. Um, and I just want to take a moment just to talk about the work that the Friends of the Cemetery do. They aim to clear uh, brambles and overgrowth where they can. They help people who are doing genealogy to find where their relatives' graves are. Uh, they maintain a website as well, which I will ensure is linked below. Um, they offer walks and community events and days here where you can come and have a look at the wildlife and the plant life and all the rest of it. And they're really kind of keeping this cemetery alive in the public conscience which, considering it's not taken a burial in for more than 60 years now, I think is a really, really good thing. Word of advice, if you come to this cemetery to walk around, especially in this top section, the paths are very roughly hewn, there's lots of obstacles, so do take care, wear comfortable shoes, wear sturdy shoes and take your time. So my second in command camera woman here is giving you another shot of the railway track. It's the only railway, active railway line that runs through a cemetery in the UK. Little fact there, so Ward's End is a bit of a leader in something. It's the only active railway line that runs through a cemetery in the United Kingdom. So the first burial here at Ward's End, it was a little girl called Anne-Marie Marsden. So the sun's getting in my face. Uh, she was aged just two when she passed away. Let me grab that, Hannah. <laughs> um, from what I understand, we're back in the lower section of the cemetery. She's buried in the lower section, but finding exactly where will be quite difficult because Hannah's going to pan round and show you just how steep and treacherous these paths are. Now, I don't know much about flowers, about plants. Keep on the stones, Hannah, keep on the cemetery. Um, I don't know much about any of that, but I've seen oak trees, elm trees, sycamores, I've seen ivy, I've seen brackens, brambles, bluebells. Uh, slow down, slow down, I can't keep up with you. Fine, she's running off with this camera. Um, and all kinds of other plants as well. And I do know that this cemetery, according to Wikipedia, also has an issue with Japanese knotweed. Um, so there's an awful lot of plant and flower species here as well. So not only is it the wildlife element, but it's also the nature element of the different plants and trees and things that we can see as we go through. I look horrendous. I'm boiling hot. It's a steep walk up that hill. But yeah, we're almost back at the bottom. We're going to go and have a look at the chapel footings. What a beautiful looking place this is first thing in the morning. Okay, so you can see here some information about the chapel. And uh, if you pause the video here, you can read what is on it. I'll just zoom in a little bit. 
at the writing so opening in 18 something seven 57 i think uh, however the mortuary chapel which used to stand here was built later replacing a marquee that would stay temporarily demolished in 1954 and an archaeological excavation was done in 2014 and as you can see there it's a reconstruction of some of the tile work that was within the chapel and Hannah has found the war memorial as I said we've got Hillsborough barracks not far away so the war memorial here is, is quite important and as you can see it's an obelisk style and every year here they do hold a service of remembrance and this war memorial is actually placed on the footing of the chapel Hannah's found a column now this could be off a grave it's got some writing on it let's have a look in memory of Elizabeth Ann, beloved wife of J.P.A. Alfred Francis, who died 27th of June 1859. So this is actually from not far off when the cemetery opened. Nice find, Hannah. So I'm at the very bottom section now at the bar that's closest to the river and this bit here is incredibly overgrown you literally can't see anything um, amongst the ivy and the brambles and so on occasionally we do get the odd gravestone that peeps out at us like that one there but this is pretty much you know the the, the biggest or most overgrown part uh, of Ward's End um looks like we've also looks like a bit of fly tipping which is a great shame but yeah this is really truly a magnificent place um i, I don't really i mean words absolutely fail me in in the beauty of this place as overgrown as it is it's still very beautiful and definitely worth the trek out here but just be warned, <laughs> it's quite hilly. So we're just coming back up to where the chapel is. And we may have found some more wildlife. Here he comes. If Hannah shifts out the way, we'll be able to see. Look who's coming to the cemetery today. It would be our TVI. So here he is, here's TVI, come to, come to join us. Now, I've actually been to the cemetery before with him and I, I, I think you're going to have fun editing this one. Why? Well, there's quite a lot of shots for a start. Yeah. And uh, it's it really, truly, you'll see on the, the images when we do edit this, how beautiful a place this is, how just how fabulous this is. Hannah's been my camera woman as well. Okay. So be prepared for the wobbles. <laughs> but yeah okay so we're just coming out of the the chapel bit here you can see the sun has come out it's a lovely saturday morning in may but i think what we'll do is we'll bring this one to a close and i do hope that you enjoy the video as i said i will put the links in the description or provide andy with the links to put in the description below for the uh, friends of uh, site um, there's both a public website and a Facebook page which I do follow quite a lot and if you're watching Howard I do follow <laughs> and uh, yeah so we'll leave it for there and we'll go on to our next one so until then we will see you on the next video bye bye for now